Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Thanks for tuning in. So here we go, this is the start of this beauty of a kit from Airfix. It's the 124 scale Spitfire. Luckily it's a sensibly sized box, <laughs> so we can get it on the camera. It's also not very glossy either, which is cool. Um, so this is the kit, it is kit number A17001. And I've had a lot of requests to start this, um, even though the Lancaster's still not done, the Hellcat's still not done, the Stug's still not done, and various other things still aren't done. But um, I've had a lot of people asking me to do the book, to finish the book. And funny enough, I did actually get it out the other day, the book uh, Russian Missile Launcher. But I think at the moment, perhaps it's a little um, inappropriate and may sort of concern some people, upset some people. So I'm not going to get it out at the moment. But... Um, we will get that one done. So, this is the uh, 124th Mark 9C. So, beautiful little manual from Airfix. It's an A4 sort of size book. And uh, if you go back and look at my review, you'll see I spent a long time looking at the manual. Um, in the front of the uh, manual here, we've got all the colour callouts, which it means we're going to have to keep coming back to this. What I've done here, I've actually written above in pencil, I've written the actual the cross reference colours that um, Humbrol give for these. These are the, the Humbrol number is the dark number across here. And I've written across the top there the Tamiya XF number. That's not the Tamiya lacquer paint number. It's the Tamiya XF number. And you can see here I've got one crossed out where they've got 130 sat in white. They've got it as XF1. XF1 is actually matte black. So it's obviously not a correct. They, they, I think they mean XF2. But um, something that nobody seems to match is this 225 matte middle stone which is a bit weird um, and nobody seems they don't there seems to be no match match for the trainer yellow or the metallic brass or the where's the other one I saw matte red brown which is going to be like a whole red brown I'm guessing it's probably for rust um, we got uh, azure blue which I've already mixed up here um, and when I use it I will tell you how to mix it because uh, I'm going to have to mix some more um, but basically you can see on there I just zoom that in, you can freeze frame and you can see I've written on there the numbers of the Tamiya paints so you don't have to go and look them up. Um, so basically the instruction manual starts off typical Airfix style. We've got a whole page here dedicated to decals, decals, and these are for the cockpit area. So um, you have individual um, dials and everything for the instrument panel. Many of you are going to wait for this company here, Red Fox. Or Airscale to come out with a, um, an instrument panel. I believe the Airscale one will be available in around about six to eight weeks, apparently. Um, so that's going to be worth getting because we all know the Airscale instrument panels are beautiful. Um, normally, Peter's got them ready uh, as soon as the kit's available because Airfix send him some bits and pieces, but it looks like they haven't done that this time. I'm only guessing that may not be factual, but I'm guessing that's the case. Um, so and then Red Fox will follow up shortly after, I should imagine, and that'll just be a stick-on panel. Um, and they'll probably give you some other details dotted around the cockpit as well. But I want to get on with this. I want to build it as per the instructions, and I want to build it out of the box. I'm not going to do this as, like, beginner's video, but I will be going back to sort of basics for the newer modelers, um, rather than just, you know, piling away. Anything I see which is going to catch you out, any, anything where I think we should change the build sequence to make painting easier, to make it a little bit easier, whatever. But the one thing I will say, having looked through here, we need to be very, very careful about changing build sequences around. Because as you can see, for example, here, if we fitted this part here, D34, which is some sort of control in the side there first, we wouldn't then be able to get that bulkhead in. Um, same back here, you've got the, you know, you're, the, these rudder pedals are going in, look like, around that pipe work by the look of it. So if you put them in after, they need to go in after that. And then that's going to have to go in after that, otherwise you don't get the rudder pedals in. And that kind of thing. And you've also got somewhere here, we've got the oxygen pipe going in. Here we go, the oxygen pipe goes in. If we fit that at the wrong time, that's going to really mess things up. So I'm going to sort of stick to the instructions um, as much as I can and, uh, and go from there. So... I haven't cut anything off the sprues. You can see here the kit is still in the box. Everything's all fresh. I haven't done anything off camera. So I'm going to go on now and get the parts I need off to make up the seat. And then we'll put the seat together and see how it looks when it's built up. Okay, just, just one thing before we do get started. I'm not going to wash this kit because I've seen the video that Les did um, from Moss 65510. And um, they don't use release agents. So I'm not going to bother with any washing or anything. 
you know, the, the amount of the oils I got in the skin and stuff we're going to deposit on there. So I'm not going to bother washing anything. I'll probably wipe the whole thing down before we paint it. But the uh, little bits and pieces like this, I'm not going to worry because I'll be using solvent paint. I'll be using Tamiya paints um, with uh, Mr. Gun Leveling Thinners, this one here, which is a solvent based anyway. So, and I use, I don't use XF71 cockpit green or something I wanted to talk about. I don't use um, cockpit green. I use a mix of XF71 and XF21 to give me this this much lighter green colour. Then when we do the washes and stuff, it brings it up and it makes it a lot um, a lot more accurate. I think XF71 is a little too dark uh, in reality. And also, if you notice on the bottle, it says... <clears throat> it says cockpit green there, but it's actually a Japanese... They, when they first brought it out, it was Japanese cockpit green. So I think it's actually a little too dark, to be honest. But... Um, in a model, I like. I'm going to get it light. They always, cockpits always look a bit too dark to me. Something I did notice: they say in here that all the interiors should be painted in Humbrol number 78, which they say is matte cockpit green. And if we look on here, matte cockpit green 78 is this one here, which to me looks very dark. The Humbrol cross reference for that colour is XF71, which is this one which is the Tamiya XF71 and I think it's too dark so there we go um, the noise you can hear is my squeaky old chair I've got a new secret lapse chair which we'll have very soon put together so you won't have to listen to that anymore so I'm going to get this seat together get the seat off the sprues and that's the other thing I was going to say Tamiya, Tamiya, Airfix <laughs> have done a wonderful job here we have this is the D sprue now, we all know, I've mentioned it before, you get trumpeter kits where you get something like this and you'll have D1, D2, F3, sorry, C8, and then here you've got R34, and, and it's just, you're, you're forever trying to find the sprues. If you look here, everything is D. Go over the page, everything is D. And when you get to the X's, that's the clear part. But everything is D all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Do, 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 do. I'm just looking here. You know, that is so fantastic. And then here we get to E. So we've gone 31 steps and just used one sprue. So thank you for that Airfix. Once again, they did it with the Hellcat as well. They've done a fantastic job. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to get the seat put together. So have the seat parts off and all cleaned up and de-seamed and everything. I'm sorry if this video appears a little bit bitty. Um, <coughs> but I've still got my horrible hacking cough. And if I go into a coughing fit, I need to turn off the camera and then edit it. You know, post-edit and stuff. So if it seems a bit stop-starty, that's why. Um, I'm just using my scriber here because I've sanded away the seam line around the top of the seat there and I just want to re reinstate those creases in that leather backing there we go so <coughs> again I'm going to say this plastic is it's the first time I've worked with this plastic it's wonderful it's not like the soft airfix stuff that we're used to the, the stuff that I call blue tack um, it's absolutely lovely and I really, really like it. It's like it's very much like the board, the border model plastic. It's slightly softer, if anything. Um, a little bit of a clean up in there. Just a bit of a, a tiny bit of flash in there. Just get rid of that. And uh, it's worth noting the ejector pin marks here are all hidden. We got ejector pin marks in the back of the seat, but they're going to be hidden. We've got ejector pin marks here under the seat. They're going to be hidden. And there's ejector pin marks. No, there's no ejector pin marks on there at all. So you can have your seat upside down if you want. And it won't be seen. So this seat back is going to glue into the seat base. Like this. Okay. And that all fits together lovely. But the trouble is, we've got a seam. Because it's been moulded that way, we've got a join across there, you can see. So I'm going to glue this together. And I'm going to actually use super glue, I think. Because I'm going to use my new best friend super glue. This one here, which is the VMS Black Thin, you can get from these guys here, Premium Hobbies. Um, I absolutely love it. 
I wouldn't normally use super glue in a build. But I'm going to just put a drop in here. And it's great because it's black, you can see where it goes. And it makes an absolutely wonderful filler. So I'm going to get my little glue applicator. And I'm going to put some glue on here. As you know, I would normally use cement. I wouldn't normally use super glue. But this is going to be enclosed in the seat sides. So I'm just going to stick that together like that. And it's not quick drying this stuff. It's, it gives you plenty of time to work with it, which is really nice. There we go. I think that's that's sort of sort of bonded now. What's very weird when you look on the VMS website, they say it takes 24 hours to fully harden. So I'm just going to put some in here in this seam. And the reason I'm using super glue, which I wouldn't normally do, as you know, I normally don't use super glue. I use Mr. Surfacer. But I'm using super glue because it dries a lot faster. It dries a lot harder, but not hard enough that you can't sand it nicely. And also, it doesn't shrink. Now, Mr. Surfacer will shrink, and you can keep applying more and get it all sorted, and it's lovely. But when you, if you spray it with a heavy coat of primer, you'll end up with a line because it slightly attacks the surface. With this, that won't happen. So what I'm going to do is grab a little bottle of an accelerator. I've got a modelling mat in the way. Let's grab a little drop of accelerator. I've got an aerosol can here. This is Vital Bond accelerator. Um, and I'm just going to just, it's a brand new tin, so it's very difficult to get out a tiny little, I could normally just get a couple of spatters out of it. But uh, there we go. So we'll let that work on there, and then I'm going to sand that flat, and that will be a completely seamless joint then. We won't have that seam to worry about, because there wouldn't have been the seam there on the real thing, I don't think. So um, there we go. So we will let that dry. And then we can sand it and then we'll put the sides on afterwards because if I put the sides on it's going to make that really difficult to sand. I'm just going to use my applicator just to see if it's dry. We need some more in the centre there. It's shrunk in there in the middle. This is asking for trouble because I'm dipping my applicator in the super glue where I've had accelerator and that can cause issues. Uh, that should all dry off. We'll give it another quick blast because it's impossible to get a little, I need to get a little squirty bottle of it. So we'll leave that to dry and then sand that flat. There we go. A few minutes later, I've used my little Infini PE sander in there. It's perfect for getting in there. Three millimeters wide. It's perfect for that. We've got a load of rivets up there that you want to be careful not to uh, not to damage. That's that's that seam gone. <coughs> so as you can see, this VMS Flexi 5 5KCA black thin is absolutely amazing. If you can't get that where you are in the world, then this stuff here, Migamo black cyanacrylate, cyanacrylate slow dry, is also very very good. In fact, it may even be the same thing, but um, that is also very very good. So. Really, really good stuff. Very, very happy with it. As I say, you can get it from there. Premium hobbies if you're in the UK. Right, so that's glued together now. So we've got the sides to go on. Obviously, we've already cleaned all the sides up. Now, there's no real sort of positioning for this. It can You can see it's there's like a radius slot there where it sits in. So the seat can kind of roll around. But if you, if you level it up, then... Got a bit of um, super glue on there. Look, I'm just going to remove that. There go. Um, if you, that's the wrong way round, Nigel. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. If you get it in there, the front edge there should be levelled up. Now, I think once again, I have to get my check references, but I think we're going to have to fill that seam there as well because. I don't think it should be there. Bear in mind, guys, this is 24 scale, and you know it's going to be very obvious. You want to get rid of any seams and stuff where you can. So I'm just going to get a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, a drop of Tamiya Extra Thin, should I say. And just brush that into there. 
just to get it to bite. I think I'll put a drop in there as well. And we don't want glue oozing out everywhere, so be careful with how much you put in. There we are, and then we can take a flat edge. And just hold it against there and get them level. <clears throat> I'll grab a picture of a real seat in a minute and then we'll see how they look. But, um, there we go. You have to be very careful with pictures and stuff because you're going to be looking, what you're going to be looking at is mainly going to be restored aircraft. You want to be very careful when you start thinking about colours of things and especially if you're looking at flying examples because they'll have extra radio gear in them and stuff. So we have to be a little bit careful what we're looking at and try and look at, you know, if the seat's all worn and chipped and everything, then it's probably or quite possibly original. If the seat is all like, freshly painted green and everything's all pretty, it's obviously restored and you just don't even know if it's the right bloody seat for that aircraft. So there we go. So um, that's that together. Just put another drop of cement in there, another drop down there. There we are, that's that all together, so all looking good. You can see now the beauty of using that CA rather than Mr. Surfacer. I mean, it's literally been 10 minutes from putting the glue on, sanding it, and getting the seat together rather than having to wait for things to dry and, and that. I never thought I'd say it, but uh, I am converted. I've always said not to use super glue for seams because they're very difficult to rub out, but Jack to Pin marks everything in their history now. So that's all good, just going to check it's sitting on sitting square and everything on the back, grab a, grab a steel rule, put that on there, make sure it doesn't rock, to make sure these, these rear frames are parallel, you can also do it by eye, just hold that on there, make sure it doesn't rock, just to make sure we're all good. There we are, so that seat's going to sit in there lovely and straight. I'm just going to grab a bit of reference material in a minute and see if we're going to fill these seams in at the front. I'm not sure if that's like a constant moulding going around there and the top or if it's actually separate side panels. So I'll grab a bit of reference and we'll have a look. So looking at reference material, um, <clears throat> that seam that I filled in here, it does appear there is a seam in the seat but it does appear to be higher up just below that row of rivets there. So. In hindsight, I would have scrammed another line above it, but never mind, it doesn't matter, we're done now. Um, <coughs> looking at the seat, it looks like it's separate panels all bolted or riveted together, so leaving that seam in down the sides and the seams down the front here is okay. You will also see on this sprue, we have this here, which I believe was for holding flares. It's not called up for in the instructions. Here we have the, this is the reference book that came with the Tamiya kit. And here you can see in the back of here, we have lots of pictures of engines and stuff. In the very back of the book we have some pictures of the cockpit. Here's exactly what I was talking about. See these seat belts? They're blue. They're like woolen seat belts. They're not period seat belts. So don't paint your seat belts blue because they wouldn't have been. They'd have been like this. They'd been like a linen colour. Okay. Um, but also looking at these pictures, none of these seats have the the flares across the front, although the Tamiya kit does. So very strange. But Airfix aren't calling up for it, so I'm not going to put it in. But we have got it there. So, um, yeah, basically looking online, lovely little seat actually. We could have that, that seam across there, but it, it's, it looks like it's sort of much where the seam is there, the join. It, it looks like the actual real seam on the real seat. There's just a line. It's much, much higher up. So uh, there we go. Right. So looking in the instructions, we have done... We have done step one. Yay! So I'm going to grab my pencil and I'm going to cross parts off as we go and then we will know if we're leaving parts out. So I'm going to go now to step two which is just one part which is D13. So we'll get that off the sprue and get that one on. Okay, so steps two and three. We've got this part here D13 <clears throat> and this part here D40 going in. So first things first, this one here, D13, is going to go, you've got these little scallops in the bottom of the seat here, you can see my fingers pointing at, so that's going to sit in there. 
Notice I'm building this as a sub-assembly, I'm not painting anything yet. So for the newer modelers out there, it's always good to, um, where's my tweezers? Where are my tweezers? It's always good to uh, build as much as you can as a sub-assembly. And it makes gluing everything together much easier and it makes a much neater job because you're not gluing after you've painted. So I'll grab a drop of extra thin into there, drop in there. And then a drop in there and a drop in there. So there we are, that's that gone in. And then this part here, D40, is going to go in between these seat frames into those holes there like that. And then the top will just pop round and go into there like that. So we can glue that in there, glue that in there. A little drop of glue in there and a little drop of glue in there. There we go. And that is our seat frame made up. If you've built the Ravel 132nd scale Spitfire Mark II, is it? 2A, the cheapy one, uh, you'll f that's a lot better. <laughs> if you've built that kit, you'll know what I mean. So there we are, that's, that's the seat all together on its frame. And then the next thing we've got is the armour plating, and then we're going to start looking at the seat belts. So we've got the armour plate off and all cleaned up. <clears throat> Something they've done on this kit, I should have showed you before I sanded it. They've done the same as Wingnut Wings have done with the Lancaster and they've put like a, a chamfer on the edge to make the plastic look thinner than it really is. But the trouble is it comes along and you've got a sharp chamfer and it, it's, it sticks out like a sore thumb when it's painted. So what I'm doing is just sanding away <clears throat> the edge to get rid of the chamfer and sort of blend it out so that it's sort of not so obvious. It still looks like a piece of plastic and no doubt you know, the aftermarket are going to jump all over this kit and there will be a, you know, an Edward cockpit set for it. But they'll probably do a seat and a cockpit interior, then a separate set of seat belts and then a separate instrument panel. But, um, they will probably use, because I think the Tamiya kit, this is actually a piece of stainless steel, isn't it? But uh, you can see there what I've done is rolled away the the hard chamfer and just blended it out so that it just sort of blends out to a thin edge rather than has that chamfer in place and it's not so noticeable then. We'll just get rid of the sanding marks with a sponge. And there we are, that's ready for a coat of primer. So that's going to sit in the back like that, that's going to go over and then there's a little, there's a little notch in there the back and there's a little tab on the back of the seat that's going to sit in there absolutely lovely and I'm not going to glue it on yet because we're going to be painting the back of this seat leather and it's going to be much easier to do without that on there we can just drop that on with a drop of super glue or something after it's painted so that can sit to one side I've also got these seat belts these are the uh, base belts off of the uh, fret and cleaned up and as you can see they fit in lovely they drop in there's no hole so there's no pin there is a there is a hole in the side of the seat which denotes the actual mounting point for the seat belt but there's no pin in the back of the seat belt for it to go into so just position it over it and glue it there now when you look at it you can see these plastic seat belts are obviously quite thick because you know molding restrictions and stuff they probably could have molded them a bit thinner but molding restrictions and stuff where that's what we're stuck with and you can see they're not particularly accurate so um, I'm gonna give it a go and we'll see if I can thin them down so we'll take a knife yeah the death this goes wrong I'm not too worried because I've got a um, I've got a couple of sets of aftermarket belts so I'm just gonna thin this down on the edge What I'm doing is just sort of scraping the back away. They are very thick. In fact, I might even see if I can sand them. This is a 220 grit sanding stick. 
you be careful not to snap them off. The whole objective is, objective is to thin them out and then shout for the edges to make them look even thinner. But the trouble is if you leave them too thick, they'll shut the, the seat the belt will be sort of sat off of the seat because the the chamfer on the back will hold it away. You can see how much I've removed from there now. You can see there's quite a step in there. So uh, we'll carve that away. Nice fresh blade. Don't ever try this with a blunt blade because you will cut yourself. Nothing more dangerous than a blunt blade. Let's we'll see how we can get on with that. If I scrape this, just do this one belt on camera, I'll do the other one off camera. We'll see if we can get a better look out of them. The thing is they're so thin now, they're just bending about. As I say, I don't care if I mess this up because I've got some aftermarket ones which will look better anyway. They've got brass eyelets and everything in them. But if we can build this out of the box, then why not? I'm going to do this off camera, I think, because it's going to take me a while. And all I'm doing is just gently, very gently carving away plastic from the back to thin them out. Just even it all up. Now, obviously, I haven't done this, this end yet. I've got to do the end, but I'll show you now how much better it looks already. When we lay that in there, you can see it looks so much better already with it thinned out. So we may well get away with using these. As I say, if we could do it out of the box, would that be nice? Because it's not an expensive kit by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm sure you'll see some bargains around soon. So I'm going to clean, I'm going to thin down that back head there and then I'll be back. Right, so you can see the difference there. There's the untouched one. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the untouched one and then there's the thinned one above it. So you can see there the difference and it actually looks fine. <laughs> I think I'll probably use them. It actually looks fine when it's in the seat because it's 24 scale, you get away with it. But um, there we go, There's, there it is sat in there. You can see it looks absolutely fine. And then we've got this one here, which just sit on the top, like that. You can see the difference in the two now, where one's really thick and one isn't. So I'm going to give that one a thin, and we'll see how that one looks. Okay, so there we go, <clears throat> all thinned out. Looking much better than the... The standard plastic parts. This one here I managed to snap off at the top there, so I've just got I've glued it back together. I'm going to let it dry. Uh, I also need to shorten it a bit because I've thinned the plastic down. As you can see, it's sort of almost hanging off the bottom of the seat now. So um, I need to shorten that, shorten that length down a bit as well. But uh, yeah, hopefully you can see if I hold them in there, if I hold them on the sides, you can see how thin they are and how much better they look. So. Uh, why go aftermarket if you can go out the box? They'll look, they'll look great with a bit of paint. So um, <clears throat> there we go. So we get them off of there. And we'll let them sit and let that one dry because I've had to, as I said, I've had to glue it back together. And then what I will do as well to clean up the backs, I'll come along with a drop of extra thin and just rub it over the back just to remove any sanding marks or any furry bits. You know, when you get the furry bits around the edge of the plastic when you sand it. That'll just get rid of it and make all the edges nice and straight. There we go, so that's that one done. I won't risk it on the other one because the glue is not dry. It might fall apart on me. But uh, there we go. So, um, right, it's bedtime. I need to go to bed. 
So I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. A few seconds time, but a night sleep for me. Right, <clears throat> we're back next day now. And, uh, hopefully my cough has gone. Um, so, going through the instructions, we've done the belts as you've seen. I have also drilled out the little eyelets. You can see that there, but I've drilled out those little eyelets. So that sort of really does improve them, make them look a lot better. We can see that when we poke that one in there, you can see... Now it just looks so much better, but it all thinned out with those eyelets drilled out. Let's get it in the right place, there we go. So, uh, yeah, there we go, we are going out of the box. Um, right, so, I've just noticed I made a little nick in that seat there. Let me just sand that away. There we go. Right, so, um, done the belts. Before we finish this video, we'll also do the main belts as well, and then they'll be ready to be painted together. Uh, so we've got to put the handbrake on the side now. <laughs> it's not the handbrake, it's the seat height adjustment, I believe. Um, so this little lever here has two little pads on it, one on each side, that go into these little cutouts in the side of the seat here. And it's almost like they're not long enough. Um, so what I've done is I've just removed, you've got that sort of, recess here in the middle the middle here that the handle goes into um i've just sort of deepened that slightly and then i've very slightly tweaked tweak this sort of bent it inwards so that they they actually contact um they could they need to be a little bit longer so uh yeah it looks like they've been made with ejector pins so if they can just pull the ejector pins back a touch or just take Ten thou off the end of them, then that will improve that no end. If you're watching Airfix, so that's glued in there now. <clears throat> I'm just going to put a drop of glue in the middle as well. So yeah, those little pads, those round pads that that that, that this sits on. They could be, they could be ten thou longer. So as I say, if you're next, we've got the tool out. If you take ten thou off the end of those ejector pins, then uh, it'll be a much better fit. Okay, so there we go. Right, that's that one on. So we can cross that off. Um. Moving on to the rear bolt, the bulkhead that sits behind the seat. This is where the seat is actually going to, the seat is actually going to sit on this bulkhead here, on that frame. Okay, so this is what you see when you look directly in. And what you can see around here is all these moulded holes, and on the back you've got the same, but be careful because there's some ejector pins in there as well. And they were actually through holes in the real thing, so you'd actually see light through them. So I'm going to drill them out, rather than just have them black, I'm going to drill them out. So... These holes down here, these are 1.1 millimeters. Um, these holes up here, they are 1.6 millimeters. These holes down here, these two are one part, sorry, are 1.9 millimeters, and then these two at the top are two millimeters. So I've got my drills, and I'm using I've got these drills with the the ground flat, the flat ground ends, and we can put them in there and just check to see the size, and then. Because they're fairly deep, we should be able to pick up in the centre. I think on those we're going to have to mark the centre as good as we can. And then what we'll do is we'll go in with a small drill first. With these here I think we can go directly. So I'm going to grab my little drill chuck. Let's get this glue out of the way. Grab a little David Union drill chuck, get the 1.1 millimeter drill, and with the smaller holes, because of the depth of the moulding, we should be able to um, go straight in and drill them. I wouldn't recommend the use of power tools because it'd be very easy to stray off. There we go. And also, once this is done, these parts, this part is going to be uh, weakened. 
obviously because you've got the, the holes drilled out. So I'm going to go on and get these drilled out off camera because you don't want to sit there and watch me do that. So I'll get these drilled off camera. Then I'll come there back. we go, that's those holes all drilled out. So uh, you can see there, looks a lot better now with the holes drilled out. And all I do then is after they're done, I go in with my Tamiya Extra Thin. I'll just show you, I take most of the glue off the brush. I just have the glass brush just damp and then go in and just run around each hole like so. And it just cleans it up and sort of polishes the edge. So you can see there you get like a nice a nice finish on the holes. So there we go. When we turn it around, um, you can actually see some of this through that rear <clears throat> side window. There's a picture. Do, 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 do. Where's a picture of the fuselage? Come on. Where are you, fuselage? Blimey. You can actually see through this glazing here that window there on the side you can actually see the back of this bulkhead so I am going to remove these ejector pin marks and as I say once again this stuff here Lexi CA black thin just gonna put a drop in my Pringles lid just like so just a tiny drop and then with the applicator just put that into there Come on, pick some up, please. There we go. Be careful not to get any of those. There is some moulded rivet detail on here, and be careful not to get the uh, super glue into that because it will fill that up as well. You can mix this with some Tolkien powder if you want to, but I find the reason people do that is to make it into a filler and to soften up the normal super glue. As you know, super glue dries absolutely rock hard. This doesn't. So we're going to fill them up so they're slightly bulged to allow the super glue to shrink back a touch. Do the same on these two here. I know you're all thinking, blimey, Nigel's using super glue for ejection pin marks. I've always used Mr. Surfacer, as I've said before. But I'm finding this stuff is so good. I won't bother with those in the bottom. You're not going to see them. So just put in enough in there to make it into sort of a, a sort of raised lump. Because as it dries, it will shrink back slightly. So we can just put that to one side to dry. Or, once again, we can give it a... A blast that should be enough you just let that go off so that can stay over there right, so super glue is dry now so we can get that sanded got the little um shield there off the head the headpiece there whatever it is uh, and then we've got this coil and we've got the mounting for that they are parts d28 D56 and D44, got those off and cleaned up. So now we've got the super glue on there, we can just get our flat 400 grit sanding stick and just sand away and get that down. <clears throat> There's some raised rivet detail here, be careful, just put your thumb over it and then sand away and that'll disappear. Do the same here and that'll disappear. And we can see that we've still got some little bit of. Uh, Little bit of a mark there still in the center so we can just grab the same pot of super glue and then just drop more in there drop more in there just fill in those little holes you can see the holes because they fill up with white dust <clears throat> and again this is the beauty of this black super glue it's so nice it's just so good can't believe how good it is <clears throat> so says he with his froggy throat I am going to do those on the bottom I may as well because I'm here so I'm going to fill them up and then we'll get some accelerator on there again right, so that's for those holes all filled and sanded now so that's all good they're gone right so we've got this heat shield here to go heat shield this shield here to go on so that's going to go on like that now some might say you'd be better off actually gluing that on afterwards but I'm confident I can get paint all in around it and everything so I'm, I'm confident I can glue that on now just need to do an extra little bit of clean up on that edge. 
where those sprue nibs were. Again, Airfix have done this thing with the 45 degree chamfer to make it look thin, so I've sanded away the chamfer so it just sort of rolls rolls away rather than um, being a sort of definite chamfer there. So that's that done. Um, right, so we're going to get this glued on. So this is going to glue into that slot. So what we can do here is put that in place and then a tiny drop of cement in there and one there and one there and that'll do us that'll hold that in place so that's that done just look at it from the front make sure it's all nice and square and we're all good okay get something look at that that's perfect a little, little ruler just make sure, just put the ruler parallel across that bar, this bar here, and then make sure that plate is parallel to it. So it's not, it just needs a little tweak over. There we are, that's all done. Right, so that's that done. Okay, it's got that there. Now this here, this is a little box and a coil, some sort of electrical thing some sort of regulator or something so on the back of there we've got a little t-shaped tab in there we've got a t-shaped recess so we're going to drop that little coil in there and then a tiny drop of extra thin in there and just square it out make sure it's all nice and square and there we go that's that in place now the super detailers among you will be adding wires and cables and everything everywhere this one I'm going to build out of the box. Maybe we'll do another one with all the detail. We'll see. See how good this one comes out. I mean, I said I'd buy another, another Lancaster, didn't I? I bought another Lancaster. I don't think I'll ever build it, to be honest. I'll probably sell it. Um, it's just too much work. So this then goes into here. We've got this little shape on the back. You've got these two little, two little blocks on the back. There, you can see, and they form like an L shape. And they're going to go into there, like that, to make sure it goes the right way around. Now, this unit here is painted black. So what I'm going to do is leave it off, paint it separate, and then just attach it with a drop of super glue. That'll make life a lot easier than trying to paint it and everything in place. So that's that. That's going to be black. The other thing I've noticed on this kit, on a few little places now, I wasn't going to mention it, but it's happened a few times. You have these ejector pin marks, like you can see in the back here. You can see that. And around the ejector pin mark, they all have like a this, this flash around the ejector pin mark. So you've got like, let's see if I can show you all apart over here. Um, it's just a tiny amount of flash raised. You, you can try to find something where it's obvious. Do, 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 do. Look at that, I can't find, there we go, there's one there. You can see on here, on this part here, we can see that there's an ejector pin mark there. And then just to the side of it, sort of from, I don't know, from 7 o'clock up to 12 o'clock, there is like a, a raised area, that, that a flash, the same on that one. And it's, it's, it's tiny, but it's enough to hold the parts away. So just be mindful of that while you're building, because there's some more on here I can see there. Um... Just be mindful of that while you're building because they will actually stop the parts fitting together neatly. So, the little system I use here, I've got these crossed off to show they're removed from the sprue. And then we put a cross through them to make them into an X when we've actually glued them. So there we are. Now the next stage of the instructions is telling us to glue the seat to that bulkhead. And the seat is basically going to fit on like so. Go on, go in, there we go. So the seat is going to fit into those grooves there. It's quite a tight fit actually. That's the, but I'm not going to glue that on now because I want to be able to get the painting done and everything. And then the armour is going to go in behind here. So that's going to sit in there. So you can see the whole assembly is starting to look lovely. And how much smaller it is than the Hellcat, it's tiny. So we're not going to do that there. So we're going to flip the page. So we're going to step 10. 
and we're going to start looking at the belly and it's telling us to paint everything but I'm not going to do that yet I'm going to um, do that afterwards so we're going to get these parts off the sprue and then uh, see where we go from there right, so we got the parts off um, and all cleaned up a little bit of flash around these these six tabs on this one just a quick scrape with the knife has got them removed so uh, all good so basically we've got this little bulkhead here which has got these holes in uh, and that one's going to go in fact yeah they're fine uh, that one's going to go into here, so that's D22. Um, as far as I can see, it looks like it has a taper on it, so the taper is going to run, so it's the fat side forward. It's the, have they engineered it so that is off-centre? No. <clears throat> you see, now what I would have done if I had designed this kit, I would have had that tab off-centre so it could only go in one way. But uh, I'm looking at it and it looks like it has got some tape on it. It's also got a Jess hair on it. So that's going to go in there like that. So we can put that in. Drop of extra thin in there. Hold that in place. And then we've got D23. Now this one's got a couple of ejector pin marks on it. So I'm looking at this. It's symmetrical. Again, it could go in either way. So we'll have it that way. Those ejector pin marks I don't think are going to be seen because they're so far down. I think I might fill those just in case for the little bit of work that it takes. I think I might fill them. So I'll get those little ejector pin marks filled and then I'll come back. In fact, what I won't, well, I won't, I'll carry on. I can put that in afterwards. So then we've got this part here, which is D54, which I'm assuming is the stanchion for the uh, rudder pedals so that's going to go in there like so which is nice so a drop of extra thin in each side of there so that's that in place and then we've got these pieces here going on to step 11 these pieces in the sides now it looks like they butt up against the sides of the fuselage, but they are a very nice tight fit. So what I'm going to do is fit them and not glue them. Okay, and then what we'll do is after we've done everything, we can put a little drop of glue in behind. I'm just going to fit them like that because I'm not sure they have, you can actually move them sideways. And I don't want to glue them in place and then find there's a great big gap or have them in the way or whatever. So I'm going to leave them unglued like that. And then we can, after all the sides are on, we can just put a drop of uh, cement in there. So I'm going to fill these, these two ejector pin holes in the back of here, which are actually very deep. So I doubt we'll ever see them, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what they call sod's law. If we don't do anything with them, when we get a wash in there, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. But I'm sure with these being down as low as they are, they're not going to show at all. Right, so we got that off. Um, ejector pin marks are filled in, as you can see in the back there. They're filled in the black bits and I've glued that in. I've taken this side panel off. This is the uh, the starboard side panel. Basically, um, you can use this as an alignment tool. So we can slot that on there, like so, onto the floor. And then we can see that these bulkheads then align correctly with the uh, adjacent parts in the side there. So um, that's them all sorted. So <clears throat> take that away. That's all glued in. In fact, that is a little bit sloppy in there. So I think what I might do... Just get it. No, actually, I'm going to leave it like it is. It doesn't matter as long as it's held in place. <clears throat> it's better that it can move around a little bit than uh, get it positioned because it's all down in the bottom. It's not really going to be seen very much, but uh, obviously, if it's all misaligned, it could cause us a lot of issues. So, moving forward, we've done those. Uh, we've now got this lever with this tank, whatever it is. Very, very detailed painting instructions in the Airfix manual. Very nice to see. Um, you know, so many of the Chinese manufacturers these days, you know, Border Model, Trumpeter, um, Meng are pretty good actually. 
uh, Hobby Boss, a lot of them don't give us any painting instructions, especially not this detailed. So that's nice to see. So we've got this little unit here with all this pipe work on. Um, and that is going to go into this recess in here. And I'm going to glue this in. The reason being that it's going to be tricky painting it, but it's going to be a lot more tricky trying to fit that into there after it's painted. So we can see there that this pipe has slightly bent. And I'm looking down here and we can see this is the beauty of the Airfix instructions. You see this going in here. And then if you look at the next step, they show you how that should be. So we can see that everything should be nice and tight up against the side. And we can see that this here, when I fit it, when I fit the, oh, come here. When I fit the main bottom box into place, like so, we can see that all of this is all away. So what we're going to do is give it a little twist and a push back. So hopefully... That will go into there, there we go. So that's going to line up in that little tab in there. So that's fine, it's all going to need pulling about a bit. And as you can see, this is why I'm gluing this in place now, and then we'll do some detail painting after because getting this in place is going to be a nightmare. Where's my tweezers? Here they are. Getting this in place is going to be a nightmare if you've got everything all nicely painted. So it does need a bit of a tweak. Obviously that plastic pipework has been pulled about as it's come out of the mould, so, which is only to be expected. There we go. So we can get some glue on here into these ends. that box nice and securely fixed in place and then get some glue into there and get that box fixed into place just hold that while the glue goes off and I'm not going to glue this back one because I'm not exactly sure where it's supposed to go yet I'm going to wait for those other two to go hard and solid who misses You see that's still twisted, so over twist it back. Get it back into shape. And there we go. So as I say, once they're dry, then we can look at uh, then we can look at gluing this this rear one here. But I don't want to be pulling the middle about. So that's that one in place as you can see there. Okay now we've got this little assembly here step 12 going on so we've got this little lever going on to D35. So we've got D35 here that's going around that way and then this tiny little lever has got a tiny little pin on it. So I'm going to use the quick setting A drop of quick setting in there and then drop this in fact I'm going to use tweezers going to drop that lever onto there like so and there we go and I'm having, I'm having mine just angled back I'm not sure how it's exactly supposed to fit but a uh, little squeeze There we are. So that's those two together. So we'll do some cross offs. So cross that one off, cross that one off. You can cross that one off. You've got this little unit here, D15, which is going into the side panel and going into that slot there. So we're going to pick this up. This goes with the raised bit to the right. That's just going to drop in there. And again, that's going to be detail painted after it's all painted green. Let's just get a drop of cement into there and that'll capillary around the back of it. And that'll hold that in place. I see we've got some lovely detail going on here. Once it's all painted it's gonna look amazing. Um, 
So that's that one in. So we can cross that one off. So we've basically now completed step 13. Now we're going to start moving on to step 14. Right, got the the uh, bulkhead here. This is the uh, firewall or the bulkhead for the instrument panel. Lots of clean up. There's lots of flash in these holes. Uh, two mil drill, 1.6 mil drill. Just clean them out and then scrape around there with a knife and then go in with the extra thin just to clean out and make them look all lovely and sharp. Uh, we've got the compass going in. So the compass is here. This is part D57. They're telling us here you've got a clear part going on. One thing I wish Airfix had done, um, they've done this lovely display here with all the, um, you know, where the decals go for the uh, cockpit. But you can see here we've got part D57, we've got a decal there for the compass, but there's no reference to it here. So you need to make sure you're, you know, before you fit your clear part, the decal goes in. Now what I am going to do is glue this into the instrument panel because I don't want to um, have any glue lying around here after I've done the, I've left some sprue nib on there, not on the back. I don't have any glue on here, so I'm, I, I don't want to be gluing parts after it's all painted. So I'm going to, the back of this is all going to be painted black. So we can get that in there. Just drop a super, drop of a super glue, drop of extra thin into there. So that's the compass fitted. Now obviously I'm not going to fit any clear part or anything in there, but we'll brush paint that black. Um, and then after we've painted our uh, our firewall and everything, or th the frame, should I say, we'll brush paint that black, and then we'll get the uh, decal in there, and then the clear part. So that's that assembled. So that was simple. Um, so we'll get across into there and across into there. So we've got those there. Now this little unit here, just to finish up this segment, this plastic pipe here has been stressed and pulled to high heaven when it's come out of the mold tool. Um, it's only to be expected, it's not a slant on Airfix or the moulding company or anything, which I believe was Plastec, wasn't it? Um, so you can see here, when you look at this pipe, this pipe here comes up and sort of goes along and kicks out. When you look at it here installed, you can see that it's it's got a, quite a sharp kick in it. So what I'm doing is pull, pushing this point of the pipe back, okay, and that brings this in, and then this little block here, it's very difficult to show you, but this block here is like a U shape on the back and it's got to straddle that up right there. So um, if we push that down, that pipe down there, we can push that across and make sure it straddles that. And then I'm going to get a bit of the quick setting in there and just hold it there for a while. And hopefully that will key its way in. In fact, if we put some, if we brush some quick setting onto that pipe, it's that hot, it may soften the plastic enough to make it stay in its place. But that pipework has been pulled about to high heaven when it's pressed when it's been pressed out of the mold saw, and it's only to be expected. It's it's one of the downsides of injection moulding. You're kind of trying to get resin-like detail with plastic, and this is where it sort of falls short. But um I think they've done a brilliant job. So I think what I'll do is grab a clamp and clamp that down. Have that clamp down until it so it dries in the right place. It's actually moved over, I can see. It actually does not want to stay in position. That's not an issue, it's not a problem. So we'll hold that over and then clamp it. That's better. Okay, and another drop of a quick setting just to really get it welded in. There we go. And I think I'll put some around that pipe there as well. There we are. So we'll let that dry. So there we go. So that's been an hour. I don't know if I'm going to call it, call it a day with a video now, but I'm going to download the camera onto the uh, computer, edit it and see where we go. Um, the other thing I need to do is get this fitted. I, I know it would be very nice to have all this separately done, but I need to get that fitted into the side as well. But obviously, with that peg in the way, I can't do that now. So there we go. So we've done... We've now done this. We've got lots of painting to do on there once it's all green. We're not going to worry about the instrument panel yet. We're going to fit that in afterwards. We can do that after the cockpit is all painted. So it's telling us now to fit that into the floor 
which we're not going to do. Um, and that's going to go there. Okay, so that's going to fit in there like so. So uh, we're starting to come together and it's starting to look a Spitfire cockpit. Then it's telling us to fit that side on. <clears throat> then we've got some detail going in. Obviously I'm going to paint that first because of all the pipe work. Um, and it's also going to get in the way of some of this I think. But we shall see. So I'll start getting some parts off the sprue and then we'll see where we go. And again as I said earlier, we're at this point where we need to make sure that we're assembling stuff in the right sequence because otherwise we're going to come unstuck. So uh, see you in a minute. Shoot forward a little bit here, do a little bit more um, work. So uh, got the rudder pedals glued into their uh, base here. I fitted all that up, I'll show you that in a second. Got all these parts off the sprue and all cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, got these two uh, formers here, they're all done. More about them in a minute. And then going over the page, um, those stiffeners there, those uh, longitudinal members. I haven't taken the belts off the sprue yet. I'm going to thin them the same as I did with those. You don't need to see that on camera and then I'll drill them. Um, the parts are here on the D sprue and as you can see quite thick quite thick in the uh, on the back there so <coughs> excuse me so we'll get those uh, off and cleaned up as well build up the uh, column I haven't taken any of those parts off yet we'll do that in the next in the next video and then we'll get all this done in the next video as well I've got the other fuselage side off because when it comes to fitting these um, uprights as these, these uh, formers into the floor here I want to use the sides to make sure they're um, straight and I'm going to glue as much as I can to the floor and then paint now this is where I was saying we have to be very careful uh, if I take all this apart you've got this part across the top of the rudder pedals here that's like a support for the pivot and then we've got the actual rudder pedals themselves on their actuators here so you can see I've glued, I've glued the pedals onto the actuators there, so they're all nice and square and everything. Um, this hole, I had to drill that out to like 1.1 millimetres because um, the pin on here was is about a millimetre in diameter. But obviously because it has to go on an angle and go down, then uh, it, it needs to be slightly open. So basically what we're going to do is put those rudder pedals through those holes there and then down over that pin so they're going to fit in. Just like you see, it makes a lovely assembly. Um, but obviously if we do that, then we can't get that firewall in. So we need to be painting these separately and we've got that, they're gonna be silver anyway. So I'm going to measure these pistons. There's my calipers. They are 1.4. So I'm gonna drill these holes out here, 1.6. Cause so when we got some silver paint on, because they're a tight fit in there, when we push them through and they've got paint on, it's just going to scrape all the paint off. So I'll drill those holes out, 1.6, and that'll give us enough to have a bit of paint on there then, and uh, and they'll stay remain shiny. Um, so obviously this is going to have to be painted separate. This is going to have to be painted separate. That is going to have to be painted separate. Um, and then we'll get it all together and touch it up afterwards when we've got the glue in. And obviously I've got the sides off because these rear formers here these two that go in the back here, they could obviously be glued to the floor and painted in situ with the floor. Uh, this area back here is all going to be silver anyway. And then we could also get that, that member in there. So we can basically dry build all this rear end into the, um, into the cockpit floor, just like so. Okay, so we get the other side clipped on. They do clip on very, very nicely indeed. Having said that, I haven't fitted this one before, so I don't know how this one fits, but the other side is a beauty. There we go. So there's our complete shell. And then we've got this one here going in, making sure we've got these two little right angles on the back facing rearwards. So they're gonna sit, that's gonna sit in like that. Okay, the main seat um, former is gonna go in like that. Like so and then this rear one is going to sit in the back with that detail there I may actually draw those holes open in there I'm not sure how much of this will be seen but basically that's going to go in like that okay I'm gonna to have to hold that one in place because there's nothing holding it and then this former here this horizontal member 
is going to sit in there between those two formers like so okay so we'll probably I think I'll probably get all this glued into the floor and then we can paint all that as one or maybe at least just glue them together and then we've got this vertical member here which is going to go into those two slots I don't want to fit that yet because obviously I don't want to fit this into the floor yet so it's going to be a case of paint it all get it all together and then touch up afterwards it's going to be a little bit tricky but um as you can see you know once we get the seat in there as well it's a very very detailed little assembly and we've got a lot of detail to go into that side wall on the port side as well so yeah top marks airfix top marks plastic the plastic you've used is wonderful the molding is really really nice other than those bits of flash around the ejector pins um, I have no complaints at all so uh, it's also nice that they've got these side panels, they're the same as Tammy, the side panels are actually joined on a on a rib where a rib would be so we can actually paint these side panels separately and then when we glue it all together we just use a tiny little dab of glue in each of those positions and then we don't have to mess up our paintwork so there we go um, Oh, I've glued these uh, oxygen tanks, I think they're oxygen, tanks together as well so we can deal with the seams on them, we'll let them go hard. But uh, obviously lots and lots to deal with, so the next thing I've got to do is draw those holes out in there and then um, get all the rest of the parts off the sprue. We've got all this in here to do in the next part and we'll get all that on and then we'll get it all primed and painted. Working away again, all these bits off and as you can see we've got in the instructions, we've got here all these little pieces going in the side. There you can see all those and there. There we go, that's all glued in there now. As you can see, doing it all now, and then I'll detail paint it all once it's done. The biggest problem with, um, as, as, as I said before, with detail painting and then gluing together, is all the glue marks you're getting everywhere. I've just put in the control column together, and it is a work of art. It's absolutely gorgeous. You've got all the pipe work there, separate from the main part. You can see how it goes together here. You've got the main stanchion there, and then we've got all the pipe work there, and then we've got the aluminium or is it aluminium? I think it's aluminium. Lump on the top there with the grip and everything. And then we've got a beautiful little separate brake lever on the back. But what I noticed before I glued the brake lever on, there is a massive ejector pin mark there. Okay, you can see that great big ejector pin mark. So we're going to fill that up. I was going to put a piece of plastic rod in there, but the trouble is it can take a while to dry. So what we'll do is we're going to put some super glue in there. And fill that hole up with it and what you could do as I say is get a piece of plastic rod or a piece of sprue and shove it in there just so you haven't got one lump of glue but uh, this super glue is so easy to sand I'm not going to worry about it so we'll get that in there like that let that sit as you can see it's slightly proud of the surface let that sit for a second just give it a quick blast with the accelerator Come on, it's impossible to get a tiny jet out of there. Let's give that a little blast. Let that dry do its thing. And then uh, we'll sand that back. And we make sure we do that before we fit that brake lever. I'm also going to do a bit more seam clean up on the side there. Let's get that super glue out of the way. A bit more of a seam clean on the side there. There we go. That's a bit nicer. Three o'clock, it's Thursday, I need to go shopping. I hate food shopping. That's still a bit soft. So, um, I think what I'll do is leave that. And then basically, um, getting up to here, we are pretty much done. Now, this piece here is telling us to put in at this point we've got all this detail going in the side of the cockpit here so obviously we've got to be very careful if we glue this piece into the side of this into the side of the fuselage we won't be able to get the cockpit in because that's obviously going to fall down over the cockpit so we've got to be very very careful so we're not going to go into this this area yet we're going to stay within this boundary so basically we have done all the way up to step 31 without gluing everything together obviously because we're going to paint it so on the sprue we've got a couple of bits and pieces left nothing much at all but um uh, probably there's, there's there's at least the throttle quadrant there we're not going to be using. We know we're not going to be using the flare rack there. 
There's some other bits and pieces up here. I'm guessing we'll be using those bits later. But you can see we've done all of this, all of this work, all the way up to step 31, and we have only used sprue D, and we haven't even finished with sprue D yet. So because when we get over here, here we go. We got we got an E there. So we've got we're starting on the E's. Uh, we got a D there, and then these are all D's here. So it's all looking good. It's all looking good. D3 there is a tiny, tiny part. I have noticed on the sprue. D3 is tiny. And that's going to glue into there. Or into there, sorry. So I think what we'll do is glue that in before we take that part off the sprue. In fact, I'm going to do it now. So let's get that. D3 is a tiny little part with a little rectangular leg on the back of it. So we'll get that off. Put that down there. I'm just going to check with my tweezers. I'm just going to check. I have got all of that leg off. Yes, I have. So basically, this part is tiny. I'm going to have to do this off camera, I think. And that is going to go with the pit facing downwards, you can see here, it's going to go with the pit facing downwards in that part there. So I'm going to get this down on the bench, I'm going to move those parts out of the way, get this down on the bench, put a drop of glue in there, and then drop that down in there. There we go, just like so. So we've managed to glue that on before we've actually taken it off the sprue. So we can leave that to dry now. And we will cross that off. Where was it? Here it is. Cross that one off. So um, there we go. So I'm going to go shopping. So we're going to call that a day for this one. As I say, we've done all the way up to step 31. Make sure we don't lose that. I'm just wondering if that is ready to rub down yet. Yes, it is. So we'll grab our little PE sander and just gently sand away at that. And there we go, that's that ejector pin mark disappeared. Just like so, and then we can get our glue, our blah, 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 glue lever, our brake lever. So I'm going to put some glue in that hole. There's not enough, my glue's getting low. And then pick up the brake lever, drop it in that hole. Which way round did it go in? It does show you on the instructions here which around it goes and it's going that way that is correct so it's going to drop into there like that push that down in there we are and it actually goes to the other side like that so i'm going to put another drop of glue in there just to make sure it's solid as you can see, according to the instructions, it goes just to the side of that block there. That is the nicest, that is the nicest little control car I've ever seen. There is a little bit of flash on there, which I thought was a little pip or something, but it's not. It's a bit of flash. So I'm going to cut that off of that brake lever. And then a good little tip, if you've got bits of flash that get on your nerves, just get your extra thin and just rub it over it like that and it'll make it disappear. And the same goes for seam lines, you can go around the edge of this control column, around the edge of there. And it just takes out any seam lines or anything you've got left behind. There we are. So that is, as I say, the most gorgeous 24th scale control column ever seen it's lovely and that is obviously going to sit in the floor it's going to sit in there like that 
So as you can see, it's starting to turn into a beautiful, beautiful cockpit. There we are. Right, so I'll call that a day for part one. Um, and as I say, just a reminder, don't forget guys, there is nothing on here to tell you, but when you get to the beginning, you've got this bit about the decals. You know, we've got a decal going in the compass. We've got a decal going on to this piece here. Um, we've got decals going into the side here on that panel and on there. We've got decals for the oxygen tanks. There's lots of decals to go in here, so we need to make sure that we've got the uh, make sure we get them in there. But obviously, we want to paint everything first. So um, I'll see you all soon for part two. Maybe even tomorrow. We shall see. And uh, I'll be back. Whoops, Daisy, throwing it around the place. Oh dear, dear, dear. I'll see you all soon for part two. And um, I think when I come back, I'll have this all primed and ready for some painting, or maybe even painted or whatever. But uh, I'll see you all then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.